Hi, it's me. I'm just sitting in the sunroom finishing my coffee, uh, waiting for my husband to come back because today we're going to shop. Uh, <laughs> today we're going to Frightmare in the Falls, which is a little horror convention in Niagara Falls, and I'm super excited to be going. Uh, we have some of our Halloween stuff ready. We don't really decorate that early, even though we love Halloween. But yeah, I'm super excited to check out what they have at Frightmare in the Falls this year. There's a bunch of good panels. It's not just horror, it's also like metaphysical stuff. So they have like, um, like a medium who does a demonstration. I think the girls from Rob Zombie's Halloween are doing, um, who do a podcast together, they're gonna be there doing something. Um, there's all kinds of panels that are included in your ticket price, so it's super fun. Uh, we went, I think, one other time, although my memory of it, I think I just like had so much fun that I feel like I've been more than once. Um, and I'm hoping to find some good stuff today. I did just buy a bunch of uh, physical media online because of all the October, like Shocktober um, horror movie sales and deals that are happening right now. But there were some things I weren't, I wasn't able to get online, so I'm really hoping to be able to find them today. So also hoping to get my Amityville t-shirt. Um, I ordered a long sleeve tee from Creeperama, but I was gonna wear it today, but it didn't come in time. So I'm wearing a dress. I thought I'd take advantage because the weather's supposed to be super nice today. So I'm gonna do a little, hopefully a little montage and then show my haul at the end. My <laughs> arm is so shaky. Plus look at this super cute mug that I got from a local artist, um, local to me. Uh, Sending Sun Ceramics is her Instagram handle if you want to check her out. She does ship. Like, look at this mug. It's very heavy. Yeah. All right. Can't wait. Bye. All right. So here we are driving past Hamilton, which was featured in a TV show somewhat recently with Jeremy Renner in it. Uh, Frightmare. Here we are at the event. Uh, it was busier than I expected it to be. A lot of people, this felt like, you know, one of the most normal uh, post-pandemic or, I don't know, mid-pandemic, are we done? Who knows? But anyways, it was super busy. Everyone's chilling. Everyone's having a great time. A lot of people out and about. It was really fun to see. There's a car from Christine. There are a lot of, like, photo op uh, vehicles and stuff. Uh, I do think this event does a really good job of like keeping it interesting. Oh, and here's Hi. Marky Ramon talking about uh, Stephen King. This is the floor from above. All the panels are like kind of on the second floor. And then there's a little viewing area where you can look out over the ground floor and see everyone in their front costumes. You can see how the whole thing is laid out. It's really nice. I always like having that perspective. I don't think a lot of events sort of offer that. <laughs> Although, you know, whatever. It's not a make it or break it thing. And there wasn't as much stuff that I was interested in buying this year. Of course, I had to check out Vinegar Syndrome. I think that's where I spent the most of my money. They have a lot of like makeup effects, prosthetics. Um, I don't remember what these cars were from, but super cool old like funerally type vehicles. Here's someone selling their masks. Pretty creepy. Hi, it's me. Maybe you didn't even recognize me in my scary Halloween clown costume. I'm just trying, tomorrow's Halloween, so I'm just trying out my costume for work. It's not very spooky. But I'm trying to do like a kid-friendly, non-scary costume that won't drive me crazy all day. So, just trying out my makeup. Looks alright. Anyways, this is just a wrap-up from the Frightmare at the Falls, which I was at yesterday. It was super fun. We got to see Marky Ramon. It's the only talk that we went to. There were many panels. That's what I like about Frightmare in the Falls. And you can just come and go as you please. It's all included in your ticket. It's kind of like a lower key event, so it's not a ton of people. The only uh, panel that we actually made it out to was Marky Ramon talking about whatever he wanted to talk about. 
Um, it was super interesting. I don't know that much about the Ramones or but it was great to listen to him talk about his experiences. So I guess it was kind of like promoted as he was going to talk about working on the song Pet Cemetery and working with Stephen King, which he did briefly, but he didn't share that much about it. I don't know if he even had that much of an experience with Stephen King. But regardless, it was interesting. And then other than that, I picked up a couple of fun things that I thought I would share. So the first thing that I got was from the Synapse, uh, Synapse Films. They were there, uh, the distributor. But I did get these two pins, Demons and Suspiria. So I work at a cafe now and I have to wear an apron and my boss, and <sighs> my fingers are covered in glue. My boss is really encouraging us to wear a lot of like flair on our on our aprons, so I got these to represent my love of horror films, which is really fun. I also found that I have a super cool Unsolved Mystery pin that I got, so that's gonna have to go on my apron as well. So in addition to that, I picked up some physical media, which I wasn't planning on doing. I've also just ordered a bunch of stuff. So I'll do a video probably about that in the future. But the Vinegar Syndrome booth was there and they had some stuff that I've been wanting to get and I figured, now is the time to get it. The first couple things were, I had no plan of ever getting them, but here we are. Heartbreakers. So I know nothing about this film. The score is by Tangerine Dream, and I was super excited to find, uh, when I saw that, I was like, you know what, I'm just gonna go for it. I'm gonna get this one. It looks fun. Here's the, I assume the original artwork. And then, let's see what's on the inside. So I have a fun like 80s style disc and a booklet. Ooh, I didn't even know. So there is alternate art, which is the artwork from the slipcase. Um, yeah, and then there's this booklet. Looks pretty fun. I've, I have no idea what this film is about and I'm kind of like, going in blind so I don't want to read the booklet or look too closely at it because I don't want to know. I just want to watch it once uh, October is done and I can go back to watching a non-horror every once in a while. The next up I got Co the Coca-Cola Kid. This cover art on this is spectacular. Definitely sold me on it. Oh sorry this is actually the front. This is the back. It doesn't really matter. They both look great. And then you pull it out and it has the same artwork. I got this one um, because first off, I love Coca-Cola, for real, uh, Diet Coke. And Eric Roberts is in this. And if you've seen Eric Roberts in anything, he is a really fun performer. And it's the alternate art, I think the original cover art poster art and yeah so I got this because of my love of Eric Roberts he was great in Star 80 he was great in Righteous Gemstones and this also comes with a little booklet oh yeah I'm really excited to watch this uh yeah I think it's gonna be fun I don't really know what it's about either I just know I want to see a fun Eric Roberts' performance. So these are both um, new partner labels with Vinegar Syndrome. I really like the packaging and how it looks. It's MGM and F Fun City Editions. I think Fun City Editions just does the new artwork, but I could be wrong, so don't quote me on that. I am just pulling that out of my butt. Oh, and then I also got Texas Chainsaw Massacre Part 2. Um, I can't pass this up. We watched it last night already. It comes in this amazing box and look at this Dennis Hopper on the back. This is what sold me this artwork of uh, Dennis Hopper holding the chainsaws. And then we have, you know, Breakfast Club style slip case. This is like a super fancy box set. And then underneath we have the um, same as the other box art. And then there's actually three discs inside. So Blu-ray, 
4K, and then I guess the second Blu-ray is just special features. I so I, we already watched this. It was great, but I think um, with we had this similar issue that we've been having with four, some 4Ks where it freezes. This one, it was freezing quite often, which is a huge bummer. Might just be that our 4K player is kind of on the cheaper side. Here's the alternate artwork. It's just the Breakfast Club style. I don't really love that cover art, but I do love the, the like outer box art. So I already watched this, so I can do a quick little review. Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2 is definitely a different tone than the first one. I think I like it a little bit more. It's like a little bit more fun. It's also directed by Toby Hooper. He also does the music for it. The only thing about this <laughs> that I kind of forgot, I've, I've seen it before. It's really gross. It's like Rob Zombie wishes he was Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2. Bill Mosley's character, oh. The scratching of the metal plate, this time I watched it, I don't know if it's because it was in 4K. It was so gross to me and like I kept thinking, well I've already, you know, they, this is gonna like lose its grossness after a while and it never did. It was effective every time he was scratching the metal plate with the coat hanger. I didn't like it at all. So yeah, if you want to be grossed out, this is a great movie. It is effective. It is, it, I still find it a, kind of a hard watch and I've already seen it before. It's pretty gross, but it's a great film. And I kind of like Dennis Hopper in it. I don't think it's his best role or anything, but I thought he was good. And the lead, Carolyn Williams, Caroline, Carolyn, is fantastic. She really carries the whole movie. I thought she was so good. Um, yeah, so if you haven't seen it, check it out. It definitely feels like I want, I did a review of that one with, um, Matthew McConaughey and Renee Zellweger, and now that I've seen this one again, after seeing that one, I feel like that, it makes me appreciate that one more, that weird kind of outlier, uh, Texas Chainsaw. It definitely feels less of an outlier. It feels like it fits in perfectly with this franchise, uh, which I think I didn't really appreciate when... I reviewed it, if that makes any sense. The rewatch of this kind of refreshed my memory on what this franchise is kind of like. All right, and then the last thing that I got was Forgotten Jally Volume 5. We weren't going to get this, which honestly seems insane to me. My husband was really pushing back on purchasing it, um, but we have all the other ones and I'm also, so we'll get into what films are in this volume, but one of them is one of my absolute favorite Italian films. There we are. I will do a little, like, look at this artwork. Oh, so here's, uh, I guess I'll put this back on. There you see the films that are in there. And that, and there's, and that's just on the top is just the title, and there's not really anything on the bottom. So this, volume contains a white dress for Marielle, Tropic of Cancer, which is a, one of my favorites, and then Nine Guests for a Crime. So I've only seen Tropic of Cancer out of this box set, and I'm pretty sure I only watched like a pretty poor quality version of it. So like that's also why when I saw this, and I remember that was in the box set, and I saw like seeing it in person also really helped push me towards purchasing it. Let's just go through the individual films real quick. White Dress for Marielle. There's the back. And then the inside. This one, these ones don't have reversible cover art, but they have like artwork inside. Very nice. I don't know anything about that. I would like to keep it that way for now until I see it. The Tropic of Cancer artwork is, I just really like it. I wonder if it's the same artist who did the Coca-Cola kit. I don't know, the colors are very similar, but I guess I don't wanna take the time to look at who the artist is. So on the inside, you just mostly have, you know, the disc with the similar artwork. If you haven't seen this movie, it stars Anita Strindberg, Strindberg? Strindberg, Anita Strindberg, who's also in, 
who saw her die, but she's also in the strange vice. No, uh, your vice is a locked room and only I have the key with Edward Fennec. But this film has an amazing psychedelic dream sequence. It's very dreamy. I think it takes place in Haiti. Yeah. Um, it's very interesting. I, I really like how it, the look of it. I think it's fun. There's some voodoo stuff. It says here, one, one of the strangest jelly, both in terms of setting and storyline, to emerge from the genre's golden age is co-directed by two people. Anyways, it says it takes an unconventional approach, which I would agree doesn't feel like a jelly to me, but it's just a really good film and I'm happy that uh, Vinegar Syndrome included it in this volume of their Forgotten Jelly collection. And then the last one we have is Nine Guests for a Crime. There's the back. Oh, I like this cover art too, actually. And then, oh, I don't want to wreck it. Inside, you just have your desk and then like the artwork, but it's mostly covered up. So, yes, all right. I think I got some good stuff. Um, I didn't get Alice Sweet Alice, which is what I was looking for. I did ask, there was a, a distributor who had a lot of air video and stuff and I asked them if they had it and they said, we do have it in the car, in the truck, um, but it's DVD. And I said, no, thank you. And then also um, someone had a bunch of the waxwork records with them for sale and Alice Sweet Alice soundtrack was one of them. Uh, Waxwork Records, I just sort of learned about recently, they do a lot or maybe exclusively um, soundtracks on vinyl and they do a great job with like the artwork and the vinyl is also like always a something kind of like thematic to the movie, to the film. And uh, they just released the house, uh, Japanese house soundtrack on vinyl for the first time outside of Japan. Uh, 45th anniversary edition of the soundtrack and the artwork is beautiful and I was if they had that I would have bought it in a heartbeat but they didn't have it so I'm still debating if I should order it from the website or not but I spent a lot of money on physical media already this weekend so I don't know and here we go I think I got a pretty good haul and my pins I love my pins I'm gonna put them on my work apron I'm gonna hopefully, uh, this I don't think will be released in time for Halloween. I hope you had a great, safe, happy Halloween. And uh, yeah, let me know below what you did for fun to honor the season, the spooky season. Bye for now.